to the online botany classes today we are going to discuss about the last part of the sexual reproduction process in case of angiosperm that is fertilization in the previous two sections we had discussed about the development of male gametophyte and the development of female gametophyte so today we are going to discuss about how the process of fertilization takes place so let us start the concept of fertilization was first discovered by Strasburger in 1884. It involves fusion of male and female gametes to form a diploid zygote. So, fertilization involves fusion of male and female gametes which, develop, which gives rise to a diploid zygote and this zygote is the first cell of sporophytic generation. Now, fertilization involves is completed in following four steps. That includes germination of pollen grain, entry of pollen tube into the ovule, and entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac, and the process of fer double fertilization. So, in these four steps, the entire process of fertilization is completed. Okay. So, the question arises why so many steps are required? You know that the fertilization process in case of angiosperm occurs in embryo sac. And this embryo sac is present inside the ovule. Okay, so the pollen grains that are received by the stigma has to come into the embryo sac. And how does that uh, happen? Inside the pollen grain, you have got male gametes. So male gametes need to reach to the em embryo sac. So that will happen by the process of germination of pollen grain, which gives rise to a pollen tube. Okay, now this pollen tube carries the male gametes into the egg cell that is found inside the embryo sac okay so now let us start the first step that is the germination of pollen grain into a pollen tube your once the compatible pollen grain uh, falls on stigma it absor absorbs moisture from the stigmatic surface and its inactive cytoplasm becomes active Okay. Now, once the cytoplasm gets active, the intine that comes out in form of pollen tube through the germ pore. You know that pollen grain consists of an outer exine and an inner intine. This intine comes out in form of pollen tube through germ pore found in case of pollen grain. Okay. Now, pollen tube uh, your passes through stigma that is it pierces through the stigma and grows through the style okay this pollen tube at this stage contains a tube nucleus and two male gametes now by the time pollen tube reaches the ovule this uh, tube nucleus or vegetative nucleus it degenerates so by the time the pollen tube reaches the ovule it has got two male gametes only Okay, so at this stage we have seen how the pollen grain has germinated to produce pollen tube. Now let us come to the second step that is entry of pollen tube into the ovule. Now in this step we will learn how the pollen tube enters into the ovule. So there are three main routes through which the pollen tube enters into the ovule. Those include porogamy, chalazogamy and mesogamy. Let us come to the porogamy. In case of pollen, porogamy, here the pollen tube enters into the ovule through micropylar end and it is the characteristic feature of most of the angiosperms. As you can see in this picture, the pollen tube is entering into the um, ovule through micropylar end. Now second step, I mean second type of entry of uh, pollen tube includes chalazogamy. In this step, the pollen tube enters into the ovule through chalazal end. Okay, example is casuarina. Got it? The third one is mesogamy. Here the pollen tube enters into the ovule through funicle or integument. Okay, the pollen tube is entering into the ovule through funicle or integument. Example is pistacia and cucurbita. Got it? Now, uh, the third step involves entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac so in the previous step we had learnt uh, how the pollen grain has been uh, germinated, to, germinated to produce pollen tube now the pollen tube in the next step second step we saw how the pollen tube has entered into the um, ovule 
then now the pollen tube in third step enters into the embryo sac because you know embryo sac is uh, uh, present inside the ovule so irrespective of its mode of entry into the ovule that means in wh whichever route the pollen tube follows to enter into the ovule that doesn't matter but the pollen tube will enter into the embryo sac only through the micropylar end okay so pollen tube will enter into the ovule i mean um, embryo sac only through the micropylar end now pollen tube um, either passes through a uh, synergid and egg cell or enters into one of the synergids through filiform apparatus okay you will see this in uh, next slide where the synergids are found where egg cell is found and where the filiform apparatus is found okay so while entering into the embryo sac it will enter through the micropylar end so how that entry or what would be the uh, route of that entry through the micropylar end it will be between either between the synergid or egg cell or uh, between one of the synergid through filiform apparatus okay now this synergid uh, shows disintegration immediately after pollination that means at this stage while the pollen tube is entering into the embryo sac the synergid has already started disintegrating got it so at this stage once the pollen tube enters it discharges its contents here the contents means the two main male gametes the tube nucleus has already been disintegrated so the two male gametes are discharged into the your uh, disintegrating synergid okay now um, at this stage i mean after this stage the pollen tube does not grow okay so the pollen tube only grows up to the synergid beyond synergid it doesn't grow so now now let us come to the all important event of double fertilization okay that is the fourth step okay before that let us see the diagram here you can see in the left hand side there is it is an ovule and inside the ovule there is presence of embryo sac that i have already told you in the um, previous uh, video uh, while uh, dis discussing about the development of female gametophyte so and the right hand side there is presence of your uh, di the diagram shows the embryo sac where there is presence of micropylar end and chalazal end in the chalazal end there are three antipodal cells and the micropylar end there are also presence of three cells two uh, synergids and uh, one central egg cell okay in the synergids there are presence of filiform apparatus and at the center of the embryo sac there are presence of two polar nuclei okay now let us go to the next slide which involves the all important event of double fertilization and remember it this double fertilization is the characteristic feature of your uh, angiosperms okay it was first observed by navaskin in fritillaria and lilium and uh, it is so named why it is called double fertilization because it involves two types of fusion a fusion uh, involves i mean it involves uh, fusion twice once uh, which is called syngamy and second one is called triple fusion got it so now let us come to syngamy now syngamy involves it is actually called true fertilization it involves fusion of one of the male gamete because you know that the pollen tube has discharged two male gametes into the embryo sac or into the disintegrating synergids out of that two one male gamete fuses to the egg cell to form a diploid zygote now this diploid zygote gives rise to embryo proper okay so this diploid zygote has given rise to the embryo in the um, your uh, further steps okay in the further development this zygote will give rise to the embryo now this syngamy is otherwise known as true fertilization now second one involves triple fusion okay it involves fusion of the second male gamete with the two polar nuclei that is present at the center of the embryo sac as a result of which a triploid primary endosperm nucleus is formed and this triploid primary endosperm nucleus gives rise to endosperm okay so why we call it as triple fusion because it involves the fusion of three nuclei that is one male gamete and two polar nuclei so these syn gamete and triple fusion they together constitute your double fertilization okay you can see in this uh, diagram how the pollen grain uh, is getting germinated at the stigma got it 
here the pollen grain this is the pollen grain these are the pollen grains and one of them germinates to form pollen tube and this pollen tube after passing through uh, stylar canal enters into the ovule here it is shown that it has entered into the ovule through the uh, your um, what you say your chala zaland now um, after entering into the ovule it enters into the embryo sac through your micropylar end okay the same thing that i have already told you in the previous slides got it i hope this video would be beneficial for you uh, in understanding the process of double fertilization thank you